Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Keith. We are back at Essex Recording Studios. We're live in the control room, and I am with Mr. Mike Prince. Say hello, Mike. Hey, guys, you're right. He's at Mike P Base on Instagram. This dude's got like a billion followers. You're you're killing it, man. You're doing <laughs> official videos for Fender UK. Uh, I love the bit you did for uh, with the Dave Grawl drumming. That was, okay, yeah, that was good on, yeah. killer, dude. That was good fun, yeah. I didn't think, yeah, I didn't think I did that particularly well, but worked out right. I think. Oh, it was, it was a bit of fun, man. It was yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So you're just hanging out with us today, doing some demos, checking out some interesting axes. What do we got here? This is the Fender American Deluxe uh, Jazz Bass. I think it's, I don't know what year it is. 2017. 2017, a couple yeah, years old there. Old, but phenomenal bass. And it's got that Babix uh, custom bridge Babbix there. custom bridge, which is just, yeah, kind of high mass, but a newer version of like the, the badass high masses. Cool, and man. And it just looks a bit sleeker. It's really light as well. And with a hip shot, Hip shot tuners, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. kind of brings thing. it into the 21st century. Exactly, yeah, rather than a massive chunk, your sort of 60s style one or 70s, but just sounds killer. And with the EQ as well, being an active bass, get the bass mid treble. Yeah, man. Well, so tell us about kind of like your your background. What's what's your go-to bass first of all? What what do you my pick up? Go-to in that bag over there. It's a 70s reissue Mexican. Okay. Jazz. It's got all the neck binding, block inlays, rosewood. I, I really like rosewood fretboards. I love the clay. block inlays on, on the yeah, fretboard so cool. too. Just, I don't know, just something really quite classy. Right? It definitely has that 70s kind of era, you know, kind of thing. I love that. Yeah, man. Uh, but the maple's cool. Maple's quite, <laughs> quite bright as well. But for, for the rosewood, I don't know, I just, I've always used it. So just you, you play what you kind of are familiar with, I guess. So what's your go-to warm-up exercise? Do you have a singular one that's like, man, I, you yeah. know, an old gray wizard taught me this when I was yeah. 15 and I've, I always do it first thing in the morning. It's similar to the one that Nathan East does, but maybe more sort of like spider exercise. I know Nathan East does this one way he does with every finger, so you know, hammer-ons, okay. every finger. But mine is kind of doing that, but playing it across the strings and back again, so. And you're working every permutation, so you're doing like maybe uh, three, two, one across every string. Then you go up a fret and work back. That kind of thing. Up another thing. And then of course you you're doing it with every finger. So it could be like one, four, three, two. And I mean it's not really musical. It's just to get your fingers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's not no musicality in it all. You know, it's just to. That's my main sort of go-to exercise. And how about bass players that influenced you? Who got you into bass in the first place? I think uh, massively when I first started playing, it was John Deacon from Queen. Okay. So not slap stuff at all. It's just all melodic, you know, P bass, flatlined. I think he used it. He said in an interview once. Yeah, just like all the all the bow rap stuff, just those melodic, you know, the, the lines that he. I've forgotten them all now, of course. But yeah, and he's he's probably one of the best bass players that does like all this these diminished runs. So you get like. But you get this. Okay. Uh, like you listen to Bohemian Rhapsody, so you're only the Queen stuff. There's like loads of that stuff, right? So definitely John Deacon from the melodic perspective. And then I think I got into like more the dark side of bass playing. Like all like oh, the, the dark side of bass playing. The like the, it's like so you get like your Stanley Clarks, your Marcus Millers, your massively Louis Johnson who play with Michael Jackson, your Mark Kings. But I'd say, yes, yeah, Stanley Clark, Louis Johnson, and Mark King are definitely like my top three. Because you think of it, I think Mark King explains like, you're drumming on the bass rather than... Got it, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. So, yeah. so it's not just that hand doing it, it's like a combination of both. So rather than like um, an example, it would be like a... You can go... Nice. Really, yeah, man. It's like thinking of it as like the 16th. Yeah. It was like rather than like the, the, the crotches and the eight, it's always like subdividing to 16. So you're always kind of like filling the gap either with a note or like some kind of like go yeah. to something. So. And Flea does that a lot as well with the chilies. Kind of Absolutely, stuff. he does. So that's yeah. kind of my main two or like a few influences. Really, but... Right on. And who do you think, uh, who's interesting today right now? Who Who's yeah, up and coming? Is there anybody that's kind of blown your mind recently? You, yeah, Joe Dart being on Wolfpack, he's absolutely killing it, of course. Like, okay. All that sort of funky, he's like the king of 16th grooves and just 
like just so solid, so tight. I wish I could play like that. So he's definitely one of them. I'm trying to think of like, there's, a, there's a female bass player called Nick West. She's absolutely smashed. She's like very funky. Okay. Soul, gospel, you know. Um, Yolanda Charles is a name, you know, she's played with Robbie Williams, she's played with everyone, but she's sort of very much into like just playing with different people in town. She's a phenomenal player. Um, yeah, there's so many. The, the, the guy from 1975, can't remember his name, but he's killing it as well. Like, great P bass tone and just solid grooves, awesome stuff. Right on, man. Um, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are. I always keep favouriting like Instagram bass player. Like, yeah, the yeah. 504 guy, he's killing it. Well, speaking so of Instagram, he, you've got like 30,000 followers. How important are you finding like social media and an online presence to networking, getting gigs with with getting your name out there? You know how how important is the internet and social media to the modern musician? Massively now. Okay. Five years ago, maybe not, but massively now. Especially if you've just started, and you're like you're starting your own band or doing your own songs and stuff. You have to have. You think of it like there's there's two terms to music business: the music and this business. You have to be. Yeah, you have to be great at your instrument, but you also have to be a little bit savvy of, of the business side of it as well. 100%. And Instagram is just a free tool. Why not use it? If you have one follower who follows you every day, likes your stuff, if he tells his friends, that goes to 10. They tell their friends, 20, 40, 100, 200, 800. Oh, man. And then terrible. he can sell Tupperware. Exactly. Yeah. Get them selling Tupperware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. great. Exactly. But that's the way I, I kind of sort of only really threw it in that approach since I went over like the 10 or 15 mark. I thought, okay, shit, sure, I could actually, you know, just keep it going. Eggs is fun, and beers I said to you before, it's more of a diary for me to see what I did last year. Oh, that was a bit rubbish. My time is a bit off there. How can I improve upon it? Well, if so you think about it, if, I mean, I'm on Instagram every day for sure, and for bass players that aren't in a major band, having an individual account, even bass players that are in a major band, but certainly ones that aren't, you've got to be at the top as far as follower account. I mean, do you, do you ever pay for posts? No, no people, Completely people. organic. Honestly, that's, that's amazing. That, that's the only way. Because there's no point, is there? If you if you're gonna pay someone, you have to pay you, someone to follow you. Yeah. You, I'll give you. No, or not even that. It's not even paying the people directly. If you pay, I've had so many requests like, do you want to be promoted on that page? Or even a friend of mine does like social media management. He said, yeah. Give me four hundred quid and I'll get you a thousand followers. I'm like, what's the point? Because I'd rather ten people. If I was to write an album next year, I'd rather yeah. ten people buy that for twenty quid, rather than a thousand robots who don't even. Absolutely, or even engage it or acknowledge it. That's the way I've always kind of thought about it. I'm not, I'm not in a, any competition with anybody apart from myself. If I can do better than yesterday, in terms of playing, not even statistically in terms of followers, just yeah. be better than you were. Kind of I'm not going to pay someone to do that for me. So that's my approach. I'm sure there's others who probably want the stats and want the. Sure. But I'd rather do it organically because I know where I stand then with it. It's we're the same way. We've never paid for a post. You know, we're at a couple thousand followers on on each of the different platforms, but uh, we're working on it. Yeah. So what's some advice you would give to a new, the new kids on the block who are coming up, they're starting out on bass, they find themselves here, it's 2020. Yeah. What would help give them a head start? Based on all your past experiences, What what's your number one little tidbit of advice? Listen, listen to as many bands or as much music as you can. Don't be judgmental like I once was and go, I don't want to listen to classical, I don't want to listen to reggae, I don't want to listen to any of that Oh stuff. man, we were all there. I was a metalhead. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go, you've got to listen to everything. Even though you might not like it, you might learn. It's this one lick you learn. Like whether Find the talent in it. Yeah, and, and same with like reading and books. All the information is there. you just got to go out and find it. you got to discover it. So if there's a song you're thinking, oh, I want to play that lick, what is it? It's already out there somewhere. You've got to go find it, learn it, and then put it into context. So like, don't just learn... Uh, like you see, so many like people ask me this again, like, oh, how do you slap stuff? Is it just like, and I literally do this. That's how you slap stuff. <laughs> That's how you get it. Done, job done. I'm like, yeah, it is, but apply it to something. Don't just learn a technique's just a technique. See, if, no matter if it's like finger style or the tapping stuff, right. apply it to the music. Because, it, yeah, anyone can slap an E minor all day. If you want to do it in G sharp or, you know, yeah, yeah. B flat or something, you've got to. Apply it to to serve the song really as well. That's another part. Absolutely, man. It's like don't overplay, which maybe I'm guilty of, but you know, still learning. But yeah, just serve the song, especially if, if you're going into recording work and even live stuff. When there's an MD telling you to like, you, if you're playing a pop gig, you're going. Knock it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're at the band, get out. Of this sort of thing. So just just serve the song and just keep it, you know, 
lock in with the kick jump, keep the rhythm sort of nice and cool, and just try and have good note choice. But the good note choice factor will come from doing all your years of playing and like listening to as much music as you can. That will be a sort of a massive part of it, I think. I think that's another note that I'd like to touch on is pl the playing pr performance and performing live. What any, any interesting stories or advice you've 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 got there? How is your journey? from going from the studio to playing in front of larger crowds? Do you get intimidated still? Anything you do to I, deal with I it? I used to, yeah. And I guess being maybe sort of having like anxiety once upon a time kind of thing. You just gotta, you gotta get on with people. And maybe I was a bit too uh, quick to like sort of snap or shout or sort of, because I wasn't comfortable with the dynamic of the group. You've got, you've gotta, you've gotta understand that it's a team. You know, you're all in it together. You're all in it to A, have a great show, B, have a good party after. And just make the tour or the record a massive success. You have to have. I that. love that mentality. It's it's so important. Yeah. You, you can't have any divas. You can't have any individuals. Because no. no. at the end of the day, you're all working in concert to put on the concert. Yeah. You know. So of course, if you if yeah, if you're having a bad day and you're not feeling up to it, and you go off on and you the boat and you do like a massive so that's like inappropriate, you're you're gonna get off. You're gonna get sacked or kicked out the band. You have to just be a team player. Be a team player, be a nice guy, just do your part. You don't have to be the best bassist, you don't have to be the best drummer or best of anything. There's no such thing as best. If you're a good guy, have a good attitude, are willing to learn from your mistakes, and that's mucking up on tour or something, then you're gonna keep getting ass back. That's the way, that's how I find it anyway. Hey, just be the hardest working guy in the room. The, the nicest, yeah. hardest working guy in the room goes yeah. a long yeah. way. Yeah. You don't have to be the most talented. Yeah, 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 definitely. Because yeah. in music, there's no such thing as best. Yes. There's popularity. Yeah. That's different to best. You know, Definitely, so, I like that. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of my my views on that kind of thing. Well, this is great, man. It's been an awesome interview here. We're gonna go demo some more stuff, and uh, everybody check out Mike Prince. It's at yeah. Mike P Base. Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing more greatness from you, dude. Lead us out with some riffs here. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Later, guys.